Dear co-chairs, Christine and Jeannie, distinguished speakers and guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased and honored to be invited to say a few words on this special occasion. Due to COVID-19 pandemic, the organizers have decided to change the format to online. Although face-to-face -face interactions are missed with such arrangement, in return, we have a carbon-free event. The whole world is facing unprecedented challenges in this century, with climate change top on the list. According to the Paris Agreement, national and regional parties are required to propose targets for voluntary reduction and emission of greenhouse gases and to review and update such targets once every five years. Hong Kong should set its goals accordingly and at the same time dovetail with other cities in the Greater Bay Area so as to reduce greenhouse gas emissions through a multi-pronged approach. The Hong Kong government has been working closely with the Guangdong Provincial Government and the Macau SAR government to improve regional air quality. In tackling the ozone and suspended particulate problems in the Pearl River Delta region, the relevant authorities of Hong Kong and Guangdong have been working on joint projects, including a study on post-2020 regional air pollutants emissions reduction targets and concentration levels for both places. Currently, both places have set up a real-time system for online publishing of air quality data so that relevant government departments and members of the public could obtain through the system the latest information on air quality. Some prevention measures would be adopted accordingly. Moreover, the Guangdong provincial government was setting up a 3D air pollution monitoring network. The data obtained by the networks of both places could complement their joint efforts in the monitoring of volatile organic compounds so as to support the setting of post-2020 emission reduction measures and targets for the PRD region. The objectives are to formulate effective control measures, take forward the regular monitoring of VOC concentration, to step up regional ozone control, to explore the establishment of an air pollution monitoring network, and to strengthen the exchange in air quality forecasting in the Greater Bay Area. It goes without saying that the relevant specific policies and measures must include advocating energy efficiency. More than half of Hong Kong's total annual energy end use is in the form of electricity consumption. The rest is in the form of oil and coal products, tank gas and liquefied petroleum gas. To achieve low carbon and sustainable development in Hong Kong, the government sets a carbon reduction target under the Hong Kong's Climate Action Plan 2030 plus and expects to reduce its carbon intensity by 65 to 70 percent by the year 2030, using 2005 as the base. The proportion of natural gas generation is expected to increase. The development of renewable energy is also promoted. In fact, about 2,430 terajoules of renewable energy was produced in 2018 in Hong Kong. Biogas from landfill sites and sewage treatment plants is the largest category of renewable energy, 84% in 2018, followed by biodiesel, 13%, and solar, wind energy, and hydropower, 3%. Decision today will impact the livelihood and quality of life of the current generation and the future generations. Whether we can meet our climate targets will depend on whether our society is willing to take sustained and long-term actions to reduce carbon emission through lifestyle changes and policy making. Once again, I want to thank the organizers for holding this online forum. To combat climate change is a global mission, which can only be achieved through multilateral cooperation. Let us work together to make our homes smarter and greener.
Thank you.